Welcome to Slay and Excel Dragons video number 45. Hey, these are the videos that accompany the book and we're in chapter 6. We have just a quick topic here in this video. We want to see how pivot tables treat integers and decimal numbers differently when grouping. Now, wait a second. Our last video we did filter and then before that, that's when we did all our pivot table videos. Yeah, this is kind of like a little extra uh, pivot table video, but it's such an important topic and we'll see that it gets kind of confusing like when you're grouping numbers and we saw this when we grouped uh, dates and we group numbers for our frequency distribution pivot tables but if you have integers or decimals the grouping feature just works totally different alright we're gonna go over to our Excel workbook Excel is fun start you can download this file click on the link below the video or go to the DVD we're gonna start on this PT data 9 sheet the last couple of videos we're using these filter sheets, but I want to start here. Now, integers, and over here I want to create the same numbers, but I just want to add a little decimal. So this is 589, I want 5.25, 8.25. I'm going to highlight this whole range, and in the active cell right there, I'm going to type in equal sign, relative cell reference. I'm going to plus 0.25, and because I have all of the cells highlighted I can hold control and tap enter to populate the range with that formula alright now let's go ahead and see we want to group so I'm gonna click in a single cell and to create a pivot table insert pivot table or we we'll use our keyboard shortcut alt NVT alright new sheet no I want this existing sheet I want these little teeny pivot tables to uh, appear down here so we can compare them to the data sets I'm gonna click and say E11 and then click OK alright now in our video where we group by months and weeks and then in our frequency distribution video where we grouped um, we always dropped our number field into the row labels and also into the values now this doesn't make any sense the way it is now but then you you group so I'm gonna right click the row labels group I'm gonna start at zero that's a number less than any of the ones in the data set and I'm gonna type in a number that's bigger than any of the ones in the data set and the category interval is going to be 10. So the, the groups will be 0 to 10 and 10 to 20. I'm going to click OK. Now, if you remember what happened with our frequency distribution, this is just totally different. This is not the way it worked in the earlier example. Well, we have integers here. Well, let's go ahead and run the same pivot table here, and then we'll compare and contrast how they grouped. So here I'm going to click in a single cell, Alt NVT. I'm going to say existing worksheet, and I'm going to collapse this and I'm going to put it right in I11. Click OK. Same thing. Number down to the rows, number down to the values. I'm going to close the field list. Right click, group, same thing. 0, tab, tab, 20, tab, and the interval for each category is going to be 10. And look at that. How come this one shows 0 to 9 and this one shows 0 to 10? What confused, I remember the first time I saw this, I was like, well, okay, there's a 10 here on the upper limit and a 10 here on the lower limit, but they don't repeat here? I was like, I like these categories better because these are explicit. Now, here's the reason why, right? For integers, they're always going to create a category that goes from the low to the high, and both of those numbers can be counted. Uh, oh, we better change this to count. I'm going to change the function right click, value field settings, count. And then over here, I'm going to right click the value field settings, count, click OK. So this, this is a parallel example to what we did before when we did our frequency distribution. We were counting. I'm counting how many numbers from this set are in this category, 0 to 9. Well, guess what? That 0 is included, and so is the 9. So the lower and upper limit when you do integers 
are included in this category and thus the count. It's not the same over here, and we talked about this one in great detail uh, back in our frequency distribution. This is explicitly what is happening here. You say the lower limit, whatever our number is, has to be greater than or equal to, and then less than the upper limit. Let me just expand this. And when I copy this down, I'm going to have to edit this so it would be 10 to 20. These are not very good category labels. I wish they'd, by automatically, the pivot table will create them differently. You're just supposed to know that the upper limit is never included here, so that 10 is not included here, but it is included down here. Upper limit of 20 is not included. All right, just totally two different methods of creating the labels when grouping numbers. Now, let's go ahead and see if this is true. From here, we have a 10, right? So the 10 is being counted there. I'm going to change this to 20. Now, this is going to do something kind of odd. First off, when I enter this, you're going to see that pivot tables do not automatically update. So you have to come here and right click Refresh. There's also a refresh button up here. And sure enough, that 20 is now being included here. The low, so we can count, there's four, right? Actually, that's not a good example. Well, anyway, it didn't, th that is true here. I changed the number from whatever, 12. So it was already counted in this, this category. But when I refreshed it, it didn't change, which means it is being counted there. And you can visually see three, three. Four, four. But now, look what happened over here. With this pivot table, remember, we only gave it an upper limit of 20. So what does it do? I'm going to right click Refresh. It automatically calculates an extra category that says anything greater than 20. So this last category in pivot tables will always be um, number greater than whatever the upper limit you gave it. Remember when we ran the grouping here, we said upper limit of 20. So we'll add an extra category here. But look, it, it changed here. This That 12 used to be included in this category, but because 20 is not allowed in this category right here, the, ha the pivot table added an extra category. All right, so what do we learn here? When you have integers and you're grouping numbers, the lower and upper limit is included in the count for this category. When you have decimals, the lower limit is included. The upper limit is not included for the category when you're counting. All right, uh, we'll see you next video.